The queen is dead. What's up, nerds? It finally happened. They finally did it. Eudora is getting nerfed. Say it with me. Death to Eudora. Is it just coincidence that less than a week after I put out a video explaining why Eudora is not only broken, but also bad for the game, plus solutions on how to fix her, that Blizzard not only nerfed the hero, but also implemented the exact change that I suggested? I think not. Blizzard, you owe me a consulting fee. I typically charge about $250 an hour, but since I'm in a generous mood, I'll make it a discounted one-time rate of $200 an hour. And since I spent a few hours in the video, let's say five-ish, Blizzard, I'll send the invoice for $1,000 this week, which is due and payable 10 business days upon receipt. And to all you fellow Battlegrounds players out there, you're welcome. I'm doing God's work over here. I don't expect much. Just a thousand dollars from Blizzard and a standing ovation from the Battlegrounds community. That's all. So we'll get into Eudora nerf in a bit. First let's touch on the other changes to the Battlegrounds that will be coming in the 18.0.2 patch. And you'll notice a theme as we go through these. A lot of changes to beasts. I think they realized that beasts took a huge hit with the Goldra nerf and there needed to be some changes made. So first, there are two minions being removed from the battlegrounds, Gentle Megasaur and Arcane Cannon. I've seen all the hate for Cannon and frankly didn't completely agree with it. Yes, it could be strong early game, but it never seemed like a huge problem to me. But enough people bitched and moaned to where Blizzard said the hell with it and just took it out. But Gentle Megasaur on the other hand, man oh man. Murlocs now just seem like an avoid at all costs tribe. They will instantly be bottom tier now. There's no way to get divine shields in your Murlocs now. Plus, you'll have to individually give them poison. So it'll be almost impossible to get a really strong Murloc build that will be capable of winning the late game. I agree that Murlocs are too strong, but I don't think this is the route they should have gone. They removed the most powerful card from the tribe. That would be like removing Deflectobot from mechs. It just blows up the entire tribe. Maybe they could have removed Begurgle or Primal Fin and tried that before removing Megasaur. But hey, at least they're forcing a meta change, which could make the game a bit more interesting for a while. We'll see how it goes. And on to the buff slash nerfs. First up is Sorlisk. He'll receive a buff of plus one attack. Sorlisk felt a bit weak after being removed from tier one up to tier two. This isn't a huge change, but will make the card a bit more viable. You'll be able to play it more frequently without any buffs, leaving it at a 4-2, and it'll trade better with those early game 4 health minions such as, you know, Vulgar Humunculus, Old Merc Eye, Glyph Guardian, and Steward of Time. It's not a huge change, but one that should help this card see more action. These next two changes will go over together. Rat Pack being moved up to Tavern 3 and Pack Leader being moved down to Tavern 2. Both changes make sense. Rat Pack was one of, if not the strongest Tavern 2 unit. It was one that could carry you through the mid game if you're able to buff it. So heroes like Deathwing, Adwin, Kael'thas, however the fuck you say it, even Daryl will take a small nerf with this change. And Pack Leader being moved down to Tavern 2 makes a bit more sense. You can now get it on your board a bit earlier in the mid game. The stats of 3-3 line up better with the Tavern 2 minions. Um, and you can also get it on your board to start to buff things like Grandma, the Sorless, you know, the early beast minions to give yourself a little bit more viability in the early game with beasts. Um, early game beasts still feel a bit weak to me though. I don't think these changes will make that big of a difference to where beasts will run rampant throughout the early game. It'll still be more about stats and strong minions rather than one specific tribe at those early stages of the game. And then Macaw gets a plus one plus one buff. Not a huge deal since they removed Arcane Cannon, but he still dies to a bomb or a juggle, but giving it a little extra survivability will help. Primal Fin. So Megasaur is gone, uh, so let's face it, Murlocs suck. And this change they made, I don't think it's going to help Murlocs. And yes, I'm calling it a change because I don't think it's really a buff. Yes, they moved Primal Fin down to a tier 4 from a tier 5, but have now changed it so that you only discover Murlocs from your current Tavern tier or below. 
so you can't discover Begurgles or Amalgadon unless you're on Tavern 5 or 6 respectively. It'll help mid-game Murlocs, but overall I don't think it'll help the tribe out that much. Ooh, and this is an interesting one, Nat Paggle. He no longer summons a 0-2 treasure chest with overkill, but instead now adds a random minion to your hand when he attacks and kills a minion. I for one really like this change. I don't think this is a nerf, but rather just a change to the hero. There will still be that RNG element to the card, but now it can't completely ruin someone's game. If you haven't been in a position where you essentially won the fight, but then pop the chest only to discover a golden boat or gas coiler inside, and end up taking like 25 damage and an exit from the game, consider yourself lucky. This change will remove that from happening, but still give that nice RNG taste you addicts are looking for, since you'll be getting a random minion added to your hand. I think this card will remain at a similar power level and won't see much of a change in its usage. Good change in my opinion overall though. Which brings us to the last two minion changes. Mama Bear is now a Tavern 5 minion, but is now a 4-4 minion that gives plus 4, plus 4 when you summon a beast, as opposed to being a 5-5 minion that gives plus 5, plus 5. And Goldrin's Death Rattle now gives your beast plus 5, plus 5. So long story short, I think beast just got a lot stronger. Think about being a 9 gold, grabbing a triple, leveling to Tavern 4 and discovering a Mama Bear. This gives you immediate direction into a true endgame build and will give you a huge power spike the next few turns. Yes, the mama buff is a bit nerfed, but should still be more than strong enough to carry you to the end game if picked up early. So overall, these changes clearly did two things. Nerf the ever-loving shit out of Murlocs and buff beasts. Start keeping an eye out for more beast builds moving forward. Which brings us onto the final set of changes, the hero changes. First and foremost, Lady Vash is gone. She sucked anyway, so who cares? And then will you lucky here? The exact nerf that I suggested for Eudora. Strange, isn't it? Almost like someone from Blizzard stole my idea, took it back internally, and sold it to his team at Blizzard. Those bastards. No, but for real, this was an obvious nerf that should have been implemented a long time ago. So what will this nerf do to Eudora? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I don't think it'll completely dumpster her, but I do think it'll put her in the area of like the mill houses and Tokis and Skycap and Crags of the world. Maybe still a little bit stronger, but hey, even if she remains a top tier hero, just no longer in a completely broken state, I'll be happy with that. Uh, Reno Jackson also got a buff. His hero power started out at four, went down to three gold, down to two gold, and now it's at zero. This will help him, but as with the other changes, I don't think it will be incredibly impactful. It may take him from like a 4.7 average placement, which is where he's currently at, to maybe up to around a 4.5-ish, but he still won't be top tier. And then on to Lich King. I think this change is really interesting. His hero power now costs zero gold. Lich King is currently one of the worst heroes in the game, and this change I think will move him up a ton. Probably into tier 3, but maybe even tier 2. We'll see. This will make him incredibly strong early game. He will basically have free wins turn 1 and 2, and if he finds a good death rattle when leveling up to tavern 2, like a bomb or a spawn, he'll be really, really strong throughout the entire early game. It's almost like an early game yaw, where you just get so much tempo from your hero power that you breeze through the early game. Well now, same thing with Lich King but with a hero power that can be really effective in the late game as well. I'm pretty excited about this change. I think Lich King just got a huge buff. And finally, Galakron, the dumpster of all dumpsters. He now freezes the minion added to Bomb's Tavern. Now you won't have to freeze the entire board, only that one minion will be frozen, allowing you to pick it up the next turn, but still get a refresh of the tavern. Interesting change, but one that I don't think will make him a viable hero. I assume Galakrond will stay in the dumpster where he belongs. Oh, and let's not forget to mention Flurgle. He's basically a dead hero now since Murlocs are terrible. Which sucks because I always had a ton of fun playing him. And outside of some bug fixes, that's it. Some welcome changes and some head scratchers. But the battlegrounds are about to be shaken up. 
Look for beasts to be a lot stronger and murlocs to be a lot weaker. Start grabbing those early mama bears and beast your way to victory. Godspeed, nerds.